Hi folks and welcome to Truck King. This is the Toyota Tundra TRD Pro and that back there is the Kawasaki Mule SX. In this video, we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of things. First of all, how that thing fits in the bed. Second of all, we're gonna do a fuel economy run with the side-by-side -side and without it so we can compare the numbers. And then finally, you know we're gonna go off-road, hit some whoops at high speed and see how this thing handles. Let's start it off with the walk around. So powering the Tundra TRD Pro is the iForce Max powertrain. In this case, that's a three and a half liter twin turbocharged V6 with a hybrid setup. It makes 437 horsepower and just a little over 580 pound feet of torque. And that is sent through a 10 speed automatic transmission. Now, when you go for the TRD Pro, of course, you're getting all the off-road stuff, but you're just getting unique styling too. You're getting that Toyota up there in the grill. They call this digital camouflage or technical camouflage, I think. You'll see it all the way around the truck. It's kind of cool. It's got a bit of texture to it. You got these great TRD marker lights, and then of course, a built-in light bar. This is really nicely integrated, and it actually works quite well when you're out there in the dark as well. So as we roll back, you're gonna see down here a set of 18 inch BBS forged wheels. They're blacked out on the TRD Pro and Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tires. And then more importantly, behind the tire is a two and a half inch Fox internal bypass shock. So this thing gets a full Fox shock setup and that's what helps it to move at such good speeds when you head off-road. As we work our way back, I'll point out the rock rail down there. I appreciate that Toyota connects that rail straight into the frame. And yes, we've had this truck up on our steel truck ramp. So you can see a couple shots underneath it right here just to look at the skid plates and to see how that thing is connected. So as we roll to the back here, now we can talk about our Kawasaki Mule and we might as well address the elephant in the room, which is definitely the squat. So this machine weighs 1,082 pounds, according to Kawasaki. And this truck is squatting quite a bit. Now, part of the reason is, yeah, a thousand pounds in your bed is a lot, but more importantly, the weight of this Kawasaki is centered right here. This is where the engine is. And unlike with other loads where you can kind of move around where the heaviest part is, this I can't. So the engine is this far behind the axle and that's really causing quite a bit of that squat as well. Now, when you look up the Kawasaki Mule SX online, one of the banners, the headlines that comes up is fits in the bed of a pickup truck. And again, that is true, and I put it to the test, but it's obvious that uh, a longer bed would have been better, a six and a half, even an eight foot bed would have been preferable. It does fit. The issue with this setup is I am straining this tailgate. Now, I don't know exactly how much weight is on it, and I've been talking to my dad about this. In our experience, We've never seen a tailgate fail. I've loaded side-by-sides, ATVs, snowmobiles, everything into the back of pickup trucks, and tailgates have always been strong enough to support them. So personally, I'm not really worried about it, but I had to find out from Toyota what they thought. So I actually did reach out and said, hey, I loaded an ATV, it's sitting on the tailgate. What is Toyota's position on that? What is the official weight rating? And I'm waiting to get an answer back and I will provide you with an update right here when I get it. And if you want the exact specifications, Toyota says the inside bed length with the tailgate open is 77.6 inches. The inside bed depth is 20.9 inches and you get 48.7 inches between the wheel wells and 58.7 inches of width outside of the wheel wells. Now we can take a look at the cameras here in this Tundra. So this is your standard view when you put it in reverse. Of course, you have the rear view and then the overhead view right there. You can adjust it using these buttons. There's your front view. There's down the sides of the truck and those are your front tires. Really nice for when you're parallel par parking and trying to get close to a curb. Here you have 
a wide view where you can actually look on either side of your truck quite a bit. That's pretty handy. And then you also have a bed view. This is especially good if you are hauling things in your bed. Now, one of the other buttons I like on Tundra, if you hit this auto button, that means that the cameras will come up automatically when the truck goes to low speeds. So basically when you're pulling into a parking spot or slowing down at a stoplight, the camera will automatically come up. And then as you pull away from the light, the camera will go away. I do appreciate that. Now over here, you can see too, we have the off-road button and that changes it over to the off-road cameras. So we get the inclinometer, we get the wide rear view or the wide front view. And then what has to be the coolest view is right here. This is going to be an underbody view. So what it's doing is it's taking the view from in front of the truck and then superimposing it right there on that little truck. It also shows you where exactly your tires are. This is all about being off-road. So if you are over top of some rocks or some obstacles, you can look here and get a sense for where it is underneath your vehicle that is pretty cool so a really nice suite of cameras here on the tundra and i also like that they utilize this entire touchscreen just for the cameras so we start our test here at the gas station we're going to go ahead and fill this tundra up then we'll go do our loop with the side by side we'll come back to the gas station and we'll be able to work out our real world fuel economy and we'll be able to compare it to the computer because usually they're close but they're usually not right there with each other so it's interesting to look at both numbers and then we'll repeat the whole process without the side by side in the back and this is just an interesting test to see yeah how much does that thing being back there really make a difference and of course part of it is the weight it's the thousand pounds but then part of it's the aerodynamics and the fact that you got the roof up there and that's creating some drag so yeah it'll be interesting to see uh, how the fuel economy shakes out on this hybrid tundra trd pro and here we are driving in this trd pro and as you can see over my shoulder we have the kawasaki loaded up so first let me just tell you what the plan is we're going to do 50 kilometers with the machine in it we'll go to the gas station and we'll work out the real world fuel economy and then we're going to go drop the machine and do the exact same 50 kilometer loop without the machine so that we can compare the numbers now of course you need to know what the baseline is so what are the official numbers on this truck as it sits you're talking about 18 miles per gallon in the city 20 miles per gallon on the highway and 19 miles per gallon combined so those are the numbers we're looking to at least hit or maybe exceed or maybe not i guess we're uh, we're gonna find out at the end of this now let's talk about the weight in the back and how the truck is handling so i think i mentioned it off the top the kawasaki mule back there is 1082 pounds payload on this truck as it sits is only 1155 so yes internet we are absolutely over our payload rating once you add in my weight and cameraman's weight and camera gear weight yeah we're absolutely over the payload rating um, a lot of people might be upset at that but i am here to tell you that it feels okay this truck is squatting a decent amount and i will chalk that mostly up to the fact that it's the trd pro with the fox suspension once you get the off-road suspension it just allows that rear end to squat that much more but my steering doesn't feel scary light whatsoever i still have total control up here in the front end i have uh, total power the power is fine it probably goes without saying but yeah over 400 horsepower it doesn't barely notice the load in the back and again the nice thing about the hybrid setup is off the line you feel a little bit of that push from the battery pack so the low end torque is never lacking power is not a problem whatsoever um, the dynamics of the truck yeah it's a little it, it leans a little further into the corners and i can feel that weight up higher it's raising up my center of gravity but still it's not at all scary it requires a little bit more input from me as the driver but not all that much but i just don't feel like this load right here as it sits is really stressing out this tundra very much at all Alrighty folks, pulling back into the gas station, the exact same gas station we filled up at, and bam, so our totals, 14.2 liters per 100 kilometers is what we just did on that loop, and that was 54.7 kilometers. So that was with the machine, but now I'll hop out, I'll fill the tank up, and then we'll see uh, what the real world fuel economy calculation is. Okay, truck's filled up. Now we'll do the math ourselves. So we used 
2.480 liters of fuel. You go ahead and divide that by your distance. That is 54.7 kilometers multiplied by 100 to move that decimal. And we end up with 15.5 liters per 100. So the actual math says that the truck was actually a little bit thirstier than what the computer said. And for all my American folks, that 15.5 liters per 100 is 15.1 miles per gallon. Now we'll go drop the mule, we'll do it all again and see how it compares. And now the mule has gone out of the back. So now let me just tell you about the fuel economy loop a little bit. I've been running between 80 and 90 kilometers per hour. It's about 45 miles per hour and mostly on wide open country roads. I've come through two little small towns where the speed limit drops and then there was a couple of stop signs too. But it was a decent amount of mixed driving between yeah, wide open roads and then stopping in town. So now the truck is empty. Um, the first thing that immediately comes across is it doesn't have that top heavy feeling anymore having a weight like a side-by-side -side in the back or an ATV it definitely raises your center of gravity so you're going around corners a little bit slower you're braking a little bit slower not as aggressively because the truck is rolling a little bit more without the weight back there the truck just feels a little bit more planted to the ground a little bit more solid I feel like I want to drive a little bit quicker now outside of that this new Tundra I'm sure you've heard all of this before even on this channel we've covered this truck quite a bit but I think Toyota did a nice job here on the interior it's a good looking truck on the outside I know that's debatable with some people but I think it is good looking it has grown on me and then most importantly like the rest of the half tons on the road these days it's quiet and comfortable inside. One of the things they did with this generation of Tundra, they got rid of the leaf springs out of the back. They're on a coil setup now. And that's one of the reasons the truck was sagging so much when I had the weight in it. But without the weight, it just means uh, an ultra smooth ride. And I wouldn't think twice about daily driving a truck like this TRD Pro. Let me touch a little bit more on the technology in this truck. First on the good side, then on the bad side. On the positive side, I really like this digital gauge cluster in front of me. Clear, looks good, lots of good info. My favorite part are the iForce and the Max gauges. They actually tell you how much power is being delivered by the turbo, how much boost you're getting, or then how much power you're getting from the electric battery. So it's kind of fun to watch that power split in motion while you're driving. Now on the downside, we have this new Toyota infotainment system on the large center touchscreen. And I have to tell you guys, I think it looks a lot better than the old system. I do think the screen is just really well laid out. My problem is that it's a big screen that only delivers one piece of information at all times. I can only have my music or I can only have my nav system or only my settings, only my phone. Most other systems these days, they've gone to these large screens. They allow you to have two things up at once. And I just don't know why Toyota kind of limits you to one thing. And then even more so than that, they're really trying to steer you in a specific direction. For example, I go to my music, I pull up Sirius XM, and right away it serves me with, well, what do you want to listen to? Music, sports, news, talk, all channels. It's one extra step. I don't want to have to pick all through that stuff. I just want you to bring up my channel and allow me to go through them. Allow me to cycle through the radio. That's what every other radio has done forever. Toyota has introduced a new step and I realize I think they're trying to make it easier. And in my opinion, it's just more complicated. So we recently had a forerunner here on the channel. And although I don't love the little eight inch touchscreen, I do have to say that I prefer the simplicity of that system. And I prefer the fact that the eight inch touchscreen delivers two pieces of info at once. So yeah, the new infotainment system in the Tundra, I'm not a huge fan. And then to add on top of it, this is now also subscription based. So if you want things like that Toyota digital assistant, you're going to have to pay a subscription fee. And I'm not just, you know, bagging on Toyota here. That's across the industry now. Subscriptions are becoming very common, but it is always frustrating in my opinion when I have to pay monthly to access features which are already built into my vehicle. So there you go. Don't love the infotainment. But uh, more importantly, back to the fuel economy test because we're about to pull back in to our gas station here. Same gas station we started at and uh, we'll be able to compare the numbers. So let me pull in 
And uh, first of all, we'll read right off the computer what it says. So we're even at the same pump in the park. And the Tundra tells me 10.7 liters per 100 kilometers. And that's over 54.3 kilometers. So yeah, 10.7, that's, you know, three and change liters per hundred better than what we got with the side-by-side. -side. That's a pretty big difference. And now we'll go uh, fill it up and then we'll do the math ourselves and compare the real world numbers. Now we'll work out the fuel economy ourselves. So we take our calculator. Uh, on this case, we use 5.047 liters worth of fuel. You take that and divide it by our distance, which is 54.3 kilometers on this run, multiply it by 100, and that brings us to a pretty impressive 9.3 liters per 100. So in this case, the real math actually was a little bit generous and said we did better than what the computer said. But yeah, between 9.3 and 10 liters per 100, that's about 22 to 25 miles per gallon. Those are great numbers for this truck unloaded, a little bit better than what the EPA said. And yeah, it's good to know if you do load this thing up with something big like an ATV, it's gonna chew into your fuel economy a significant amount. So that's it for the fuel run, but we're not done having fun with the Tundra. Why don't we head off road now and do what this truck was meant to do. And now folks, we no longer care about fuel economy. We're going four wheel drive. We're gonna use the multi-terrain select and we're gonna go over to sand mode because we're on some sandy trails right here. And uh, this is not about slow speed off-roading. This is about high speed, so let's go. <laughs> and the power of the Tundra off the line is unbelievable. Again, that's that electric battery making up for the turbo lag. You get that electric hit of torque and then the, the turbo spools up and the engine takes over. The power out of this engine is, is ridiculous. You can say what you want for the fuel economy, but you cannot knock this thing for not being powerful enough. So this is 62, 60 kilometers an hour, coming through some pretty big whoops. And I'd say the Tundra is about at its limit, but man, considering how quick that is and how big these whoops are, this truck is impressive. It was designed to run through the desert, and that's exactly what it feels like it was designed to do when you get it out here. The Fox internal bypass shocks soak everything up. And it, uh, yeah, it just has a tendency to feel kind of small and lighter than it actually is once you start hustling it. For high-speed off-road packages, TRD Pro is, is one of the best. And we recently did do a back-to-back -back test with a, a GMC Sierra AT4X. And the AT4X certainly had its advantages in a lot of different areas, but when it came to high-speed off-roading specifically, we chose the Tundra, and I think the Fox suspension, it just does a little bit of a, of a better job. So yes, big kudos to Toyota when it comes to high speed in this Tundra, because it just swallows things up, and, uh, and it is so fun to drive. So fun that I gotta go do it again, so let's go. Well, folks, we have come to the end of this one. So what did we learn today? Well, first of all, yes, putting a big heavy side-by-side -side in the back of your pickup truck will give you worse fuel economy. Secondly, you can beat those EPA ratings in a Tundra TRD Pro if you're driving it pretty gently when it's unloaded. And then maybe most importantly, when you wanna forget about the fuel economy and just have fun off-road, this truck is absolutely incredible, especially at high speeds. It hustles down the trail and it puts a big smile on your face. So yeah, that's it for this one. Now, of course, I need to hear from you. Please go in the comments. Let me know what you think of the Tundra TRD Pro, the fuel economy, that Kawasaki, and oh yeah, that mule. We're gonna do a full review of it over on TK Power Sports. So make sure you catch that. And as I said, go below, leave that comment, hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya.